Uh, let's take a call. Um, you're calling from a 407 area code. Who are you? Where are you calling from? Hi, this is Daniel in Harlem. How are you guys doing? Will you tell me your name one more time, please? Hi, can you hear me? Oh, yeah, now I can hear you. What's your name again, please? Okay, great. This is Daniel in Harlem. Hey, what's on your mind? I just wanted to say I really enjoyed you guys. That last half of the show was so wonderful. Like hearing you, uh, Michael, dro name dropping liberation theology and Joshua mentioning right relation. Like it literally brought me back to being at Union Seminary, listening to James Coe and talking about all this stuff. That's um, awesome. But it really, it really brought to mind, though, like there are so many times where um, I think in the show in general, you start to get into this kind of material like you'll you'll hint at the importance, for example, of emotional intelligence when we're doing movement work and engaging with one another. And um, I guess it's both a comment on the question, like I would love for there to be more segments like this where aside from discussing important policy and the history of different issues and ideology, where we could just slow down and talk about some of these issues and what kind of mindfulness and skillfulness is required to be in right relation with each other and not just blast each other in social media. Um, I guess the question that I have related to that is, are there any references or resources that you would recommend in terms of not just doing strategy and movement work, but how to uh, engage in dialogue with each other how to be, uh, again, emotionally intelligent and how we relate both on social media and face-to-face. -face. Um, almost like the kind of lifestyle stuff that you see folks in the, uh, in the dark web just talking about a really horrible way. Right. But from a left perspective... I don't want them to own that space. That I, I don't do. want them to own the space of meaning and relating. And I want to throw to Joshua because I think you'll know more than me. But I... I mean, one of the hesitations, I need to do more of this kind of stuff. I think one of the hesitations, too, is like I'm like, you know, I'm very aware of my own like foibles and need to work on any number of things. So I don't ever want to be in a position of like, you know, discoursing like I figured anything out. I'm working on it, but I know we need to do more of it for sure. Um, but do you have any ideas in response to that question? Resources, ideas? Yeah, I have a few. Um, and thanks for this question. Um, I have two book recommendations, and if it's not um, a faux pas, a podcast recommendation. Um, Get the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> um, the book recommendations are, um, there's a book called How We Win by George Lakey that just, it might, not, it might come out like next week, um, but George Lakey is a uh, long-term elder. He's in his 80s. He's on the board of our organization, Wildfire, and has taught us so much about emotional intelligence and social movements and how to facilitate groups. And he tells stories from the last, like, 70 years of campaigning about this. The other one is um, Adrian Marie Brown wrote a book called Emergent Strategy, uh, which is um, such a beautiful primer on new ways of thinking about strategy. Um, and the podcast recommendation is um, our, our staff on the Wildfire Project last week was on a, an episode of a podcast called For the Wild. Hmm. And the episode is called Transforming Toxic Movement Culture. Mm. And we talked specifically about this for like an oh, hour and wow. a half. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and yeah, I mean, I also I have a really good friend called Jesse Vaga, Vega Frey, who is a he, sort of his rise was in movement activism. Um, particularly in issues like his Puerto Rican background, so issues like Vieques. Um, mm. And for the past several years, I mean, he's, he's a full-time Buddhist mindfulness meditation teacher, and he wrote a piece called Against Genetically Modified Dharma, which is like all about corporate mindfulness. And he's working on a mm. book where if you read classical Buddhist literature, a lot of the imagery is, it's sort of like a lot of like war imagery. It's like, you know, the armies of uh, greed, hatred, and delusion are amassing, and then you counteract it with, like, these positive mind states, and that's sort of, like, the language of the teachings. And what he's doing, though, is he's saying, like, actually, in reality, like, we kind of know that, like, these negative traits tend to have, like, a stronger <laughs> pull. So he's reworking the language. So he's basically reading, like, Mao and Ho Chi Minh, and using like guerrilla warfare technology to rework the language of these teachings, like the ideas, like these different traits are like an insurgency. 
And he has a lot of interesting ideas because, again, he's like somebody who's like me. He's a total skeptic in some ways of a lot of the like ideas of like, oh, you know, you just change yourself. You change the world kind of like almost like Buddhist or mindfulness evangelical ideas, which in some ways have not only proved me wrong, but actually like in the hands of places like Silicon Valley, extremely destructive. But then on the other hand, he's a teacher of these things and takes them incredibly seriously and is a Marxist and relates them. So he's somebody I'm gonna be doing some work with in the future as well. So stay tuned for that. Okay. Yeah. You know, um, oh, thank you. I think that another thing that, you know, might might sound a little abstract, but I think it's very important is actually trying to read a lot of fiction. Yeah. Or just something yeah, that I sort agree. of takes you outside mm -hmm. of yourself and has literary to make hangover. You, it. Yeah, makes you <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You no, know, I mean, can I think you cut that out later, David? <laughs> Thank you. No. You know, it makes it, it really can be such an important thing. I find myself oftentimes, you know, spending too much time reading philosophy or political theory, things like that. And then when I go back to just reading good old fashioned literature, just really yeah. putting myself in someone else's mindset, own history in a different perspective, mm -hmm. that really helps me not only, you know, yeah. in politics, but also just communicate with other people. And I think that's something that's really important that we can sort of focus too much on trying to always educate ourselves on politics and philosophy mm -hmm. and forget that part of life thanks so much okay. for the call man 100 percent. appreciate it quick thing like what yeah. i don't know if you mentioned this before in your show but i actually really appreciated you going down to the island and dropping some coinage <laughs> so appreciate your vacation helping out my economy thanks so much for taking uh, the call. yeah that was uh, that was part of the consideration actually to so be win, honest win, win. <laughs> thanks for the call man to win, da win folks. David makes me want to give one more recommendation. Yeah, please. Which is also Adrian Marie Brown, um, the same author as before, edited uh, like a, f a black feminist sci-fi anthology called Octavia's Brood, inspired by Octavia Butler, and it is outstanding. Ooh. One day I will yeah. read science fiction. Thank you for the call. Mm -hmm. Thanks, brother. You've just watched a Michael Brooks show video, and you can watch all of our full main live shows every Tuesday night at around 7 p.m. Eastern time, and subscribe to get all of the clips you want. We're covering the globe. We're focusing on international relations, the intellectual dark web. We're having fun. We're doing deep dives with a lot of amazing guests. Of course, become a patron for the whole thing at patreon.com slash TMBS, or subscribe to this YouTube channel and help us keep growing and get that content out there. Subscribe below.